Football, bring it in. Bring it in. Come on. That'll do. Bring her in. Bring it in. Not, not, not quite yet. We've got. Oh, yes. That'll do. That'll do, Mammy. <laughs> oh, listen, do I take it, Mickey, out of me? Anyone would think I do it to her on a regular basis. Right, so this morning, hello, we have, uh, this is an undercounter beer chiller, Maxi 310, no less. And what this will do is create an ice bank, recirculate some cooling water through a python to keep a font cold, and at the same time chill four beer lines, provided you can pump or pull them through these four coils in the bottom here. So Stuart's setting up a, an events bar for next Saturday and he wants to serve just a generic lager uh, and of course have some of our beer like the vacant on hand pull there. So we're going to gear this up and put it in the back of the van uh, so we can have this just pulled out and set up, plugged in on site to keep the beer chilled. Um, but of course this has been in storage since we came out of the uh, small brew shed. So what I'm going to do is take some of these John Guest fittings and pop them on the relevant pipe work like quit and we're going to create, I might need to lubricate these actually before I put them on, probably a better idea, because they can be a bit of a pick to get back off, oh bugger, there you go, I've caused myself a problem now, anyway, <laughs> bugger, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to flow some line cleaner through these bad boys and set them up with this flow jet pump powered by the compressor to just recirculate the cleaning fluid out of a bucket through all of these pipes in series and then back into the bucket and we'll just have that loop going round and round. Flush it with water first of course to make sure we get any nasties out and then uh, we'll cap it off and maybe put a little bit of Guardian in there which is uh, something that Robbie introduced me to. It's essentially uh, it's like a line cleaner but you can sit it in the lines and it'll keep them clean until you're ready to use them and uh, then on the uh, day of the event Stuart can just hook it up pull a little bit of water through and then start pulling the beer through and he'll be ready to go and this will serve him all day I hope we're also going to need to set up like a little table for the bar and uh, a gas board because he's going to be running uh, the beer, like the lager and the cider, is going to be pushed by gas. And we're going to have to fetch a hand pull down from the storage upstairs uh, and find some way to affix it to, to the bar table that we're going to have to build probably early next week, not today. Today's job is to get this uh, Maxi 310 all cleaned through and working. Turn the camera off. You see what I have to put up with, folks? Because I've turned the music off. She's called me a knobhead and everything. I'm only doing it because YouTube want to see the process, Gemma. Give me a break. Anyway, you don't have to. So, we've rigged up um, an airline. I've managed to get it from the compressor with a little adapter. Don't ask me how I did it because I don't know what the parts are called. And then the gas, or the air, is now running into uh, the flow jet pump on the top of the unit here. And then what we've done is we've taken a pipe and it's coming out of this bucket of water and it runs up and into the flow jet and then back out of the flow jet. That's simple enough to understand. So this is where it's gonna get a little bit more complicated, I think, but it's, it is really easy. So we're going to come out the flow jet, and that's this pipe here, and we go into line one. And line one comes out over here. So it goes in line one, and then out line one. As it comes out line one, then we're going, then we're going to go into line two. And then it comes out of line two here, and then we go around and into line three. Then it comes out of line three. We go around into line four, and it comes out of line four. 
and then away and back into the bucket which is just out of shot there we go so basically one pump is going to go through all four lines back into the bucket so it's just going to go in a great big loop so i'm going to go and turn up some gas and we should start to hear the pump operate Oh yes, we have bubbles and we have dirty water coming out of the pipes so it's definitely doing its job. So the pump is now pumping through all of the lines. I'll do this again when I put some line cleaner and you'll be able to see the pink line cleaner go through everything then. It'll be much easier to figure it out. Uh, but yeah. That's what was stuck in those lines. All that manky stuff. So we'll go and just turn up the pressure a little bit on the compressor. We'll take it up to maybe two bar. Oh, we're really kicking through now. Right, we'll let that go for a minute. Then we'll change the water out for some uh, or some line cleaner. Right, we're ready to go again, folks. This time, we've got the waste there. There's actually not that too much rubbish in it, to be fair. And then here we've got some more clean water. And then we've got a little bit of the old purple line cleaner, that stuff. So this is a good indicator, you see. I changes colour when your lines are dirty. So we're just going to add, oh my god, splashed it everywhere. Well don't do what I've just done, splash it all over your clothes, because it will absolutely destroy them. We'll take the feed pipe out. Gem, if you just want to go onto the gas valve for me. And get ready to turn it up. So it's the big black circle in the centre. Right, if you just start turning that clockwise, yeah. and then we we'll should see it start to pick up the cleaner from here. Go on, until you start to hear something. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got the line cleaner flowing through there. It should come out here. There we go. And then into there, and then it should come out here and then into there, and then it should come out here, and finally down this last line. See how it's green? And then it's changed to purple, because it's picked up all the muck. Now, do you want to just turn it down for me, hon? That's it, all the way out, that's it. So now we'll let that sit in the line for 10 minutes, and then we'll pump it through again, and what you should see is green solution coming out again, because the green indicates that there's a bacteria presence or dirt basically and uh, this is an indicator which means that the pH has changed I think that's how it works so we'll leave that for 15 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll see if it pushes any more green out and you want to continue to do that until you just see pink or purple flowing and once it's just pink and purple then you need to go through a rinse cycle and wash all of this stuff out generally I push the same amount of water through as you have line cleaner. So let's say you pull a bucket of line cleaner through, you want to flush it with at least a bucket of water. Right, there's been a fair gap in between sessions now because we've just been across the workshop to pick up some stuff from Pool Station. Look at this. You know, the condensation drip ring. Well, we're going to be using drip ring. Condensation drip collector for the cold rooms we're going to be using some guttering so i just went to pick that up but anyway let's get refocused back on the pipe work here for the maxi chiller i'm going to bring you right in i'm going to try my very best to get you zoomed in on there so we can really see these colors as the line cleaner starts to flow through so remember this is the in and this is the outlet, so you can already see there's a bit of green in there. So I'm guessing we're going to see green flowing around here and then purple again. 
So let's just go and turn the gas up and have a look. Here we go. Well, there wasn't all that much to be fair, was there? So what I'm gonna do now is just take this pipe out of the dirty water bucket and pop it across here into the clean uh, cleaning solution. And then we're just gonna recirculate the whole thing for a couple of minutes. And we'll just leave that to rub until we're happy with it. So project number two of the day is to turn this guttering, gutteria, into a drip tray to catch the con le condensation from, oh don't fall off, to catch the condensation from the cold room. So I used to work with this stuff quite a lot back in the day and uh, yeah that will work. I would put the solvent weld stuff on but these are just so cheap and cheerful they'll do the job. You just click one side of it back, pop it on making sure you've got no bits or anything in there, push it up to the back stop and Whammo! There we go. So that now is a drip tray. You could use this for anything really. Long soaking for soaking a tube. Let's say you've got an auto siphon that you want to soak in some sanitizer. That will work perfectly. But for this particular instance, we're going to be drilling a hole into one end and we're going to be inserting a tank connector and then off that tank connector we are going to be inserting a isolation valve so we can turn it on and off and then periodically we can just drain these into a bucket and then once we've got some time I'll make an automatic draining system so they all drain into a bucket via a bit of hose pipe downhill and then once it hits the bucket we will put a pump in there with a couple of float level indicators and when the water level rises to the top we'll turn a little pond pump on and pump it away and down the drain. So all we need to do now is make said holes for said fittings. Oh that's really tight. I don't feel very nice on the fingertips. I don't know if this one's any better. Oh, they are really tight. Let me get some grips. So, what I'm looking to do at the moment is find out the external diameter of this thread and find a suitable forcing a bit to cut a nice, neat round hole into all three lengths of this guttering. So, I reckon we're going to be close to about three quarter inch maybe five eighths oh, I think the three the five eighths five eighths is perfect let's go ahead and do this the chuck's already wound back so I'll just tighten it down onto the bit put a little bit of sacrificial timber on there just remove one end so we're not going to damage the uh, end, the stop end, and then to one side, I think we're going to go to this side slightly and quite far to the front. We'll just pop, oh, hold on, I've got a lock on here. There we go. We'll just pop a hole in there.
just like that. Beautiful work, sir. And then I'm hoping that fits through as neat as a pin. And then we'll just shave the top down with the, uh, <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> we'll shave the top down with the angle grinder uh, so we don't have too much sticking out there. And that should give us a nice tight seal on the tank uh, to allow us to drain to waste. So we've got a lovely little hole drilled in there. Now I can get my words out in a proper sentence. So what we're going to do is put a little bit of the old plumbers mate around the base of this tank connector. There we go. And then that is going to go through said hole, just like this. And then I'm going to hold it with the grips because for some reason it's really quite stiff, matron. And then uh, we're just going to wind the back cap on. Take a few turns. Normally these aren't too bad, but for some reason this one is uh, a real tight fit. And I can't seem to do it just with my bare hands. And you know, I do often have a vice-like grip which dispatches such menial jobs rather swiftly. There we go. So that is then in position like quit. Then what we're going to do is take a little bit of this spare 15 millimeter pipe hole, 15 mil water pipe. We're gonna go and take a little slicey poo like that. We'll see if this is unidirectional, it doesn't seem to be. So we'll just make things slide a little bit easier with a little bit of sanitizer there. Not required of course. And then we'll just loosen that. Come on boy, there we go. So we've got that piece all the way home. And then the same on here. Drive them all the way home. Oh, like that. Tighten them up. And there we go. Once that's locked off, and we've got the end caps on, then that's going to make a fantastically simple little tray to catch all the condensation coming out of the uh, the cooling fins in the cold room or the condenser oh no it's not the condenser it's the chiller effectively but there we go works that will work a treat just got three more to do now and I'm also going to just trim that down so the whole unit doesn't have to fill up to there before it'll start draining I'll just hit that with the grinder and we'll level that little bit off so it's uh, it's a little bit more flush but I'm gonna wait till the silicon's cured first of course and would you look at that, Gemma's made me a couple of scrap bins for the workshop so I don't keep mixing up all my metals. So I've changed out, oh look at them, they're all down to temperature apart from this bugger. Don't know why that one's not. I'll have to look at that. But these two are. I've changed the STC on that as well. That might be just because it's at the end of the line. It was 20 two degrees in there or something so it's definitely come down from 22 uh, but we're done in here for today so we're just going to go and jump in the car and go and pick the kids up and uh, well, it's Friday isn't it it's Friday uh, most of the limp has gone today as well you'll be pleased to know and uh, I'll surprise you all <laughs> last night I actually drank four IPAs over six percent and a can of cider I know I'm pushing my luck uh, but yeah, it feels like it's on its way out. Uh, fingers crossed it'll be gone by next weekend altogether and we can get back to a bit of running. We shall see though, we shall see. Come on then Chance, let's get going buddy. Well open the door boy. <laughs> <laughs> 